Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be for you. Thank you for checking out another Daisy Intense How to Get Started playthrough video. Now you might already recognize this one's a bit different to the previous three. We are in Daisy Intense, but it is winter. So although we've already done an Electro Spawn, if you're playing a lot of Daisy and Tens, you're getting into it for the first time, you've been playing for a couple of months, whether it's on the US server or the EU server, at some point you'll come across the winter season. And you have to really think about every decision you make in a completely different way than what you would do in a summer, spring or autumn <laughs> version of the game. So as usual, we load in. I've picked a pretty generic setup for my new character's skill set on the skill tree. And we activate everything immediately. You might notice a slight difference. I've put more into my immunity, survival and butchering. Because we're going to need to fish. We're going to need those fires. We're going to need that cold resistance. With it being the winter season. So I'll probably... <laughs> duplicate a lot of what I do in this walkthrough that I did in the Electro Summer walkthrough. But I bet the outcome is different because in winter you're going to get really tested to the core and we've spawned in with awful clothing in terms of insulation. Couldn't get much worse but we've immediately found a knife which is pretty fantastic. And if you've learned anything, or you haven't learned anything but one thing from the other playthroughs, on any Intense life, first thing you do when you spawn in, you get yourself a long stick. Now, we found a knife, and we can use that on zombies, of course, but we don't want it to wear down unnecessarily. So it would be nice to have a melee weapon that we don't also have to use to make fish, get worms, open cans, etc. And a bit of a dream finding some rope in the second building we go in. We can make a rope belt. We're now halfway to being able to fish. We only need to get a, ch a chicken bone hook, cut up a dead freshie, whether they died to ha our hand or not, or find a genuine fishing hook. And we can start fishing for our supper. And what I'm going to do is make myself some more rags out of this blouse as we picked up the pea coat, which is another fantastic find in any winter server. Our knife is already badly damaged. And I'm going to make some hand wraps. So now if we gut a chicken, gut fish, Search a zombie. We don't have to worry about getting bloodied hands that we have to wash. And we've still got left with some rags for some kindling if we want to get a fire. Let's check upstairs. And when I get this spawn on the coast, wow, plastic water bottle. It's a pretty fantastic find as well. And some 22. All right. Now, when we get this spawn on the coast, on the outskirts of Electro, I'm pretty sure I got this very exact spawn, but but on the summer version of Intens. Search these few buildings, few sheds, the little caravan, whatever you want to call that trailer, and then go straight for these fishing boats. Can you get lucky straight off the rip? What are we looking for? We're looking for a fishing rod, but if we find a road flare, which is a second road flare, because you spawn in with one, we'll take it. We'll take a battery, why not? You might want to get yourself a head torch or a flashlight deeper into your run. Oh, and look at that. The ultimate find. A fishing. <laughs> I'm laughing because I can see the comments now from some of the regulars. Scripted. We now have the ability to fish. Now, these coin toss decisions when it comes to any Daisy server, but especially Daisy Winter. Do I catch a fish? Straight off the rip. I could do. I could get lucky. One worm could catch me one fish. Then my knife would enable me to gut that fish, prepare it, and we'd be off to a good start. But we're already dying to the cold. 
And with it being a badly damaged knife, I'm a bit concerned that if we don't catch a fish with the first try, it will be freezing to death on the coast for nothing. So I may live to regret that. That's the beauty of Daisy. We, don't, we won't know until maybe half an hour, an hour into this. Let's take the bandana. Use it as a face covering. A little bit of insulation, not a lot. Better than nothing, though. Because if we can stay in the light blue, we won't die of the cold, at least, yet. But yeah, in about half an hour's time, I'll tell you how that decision went. You'll be able to see for yourself. We've spawned into a bit of a blizzard. There's about 20 people on the server, as well as myself. So we don't know how those interactions are going to go. We could make a friend. It could make life a lot easier for us at the beginning. Maybe they're hostile, and this could be a very short playthrough video. What I do in my first hour after spawning in on a winter Daisy and 10 server, and in particular in Electra. I'm being thorough to search all this because any one of these buildings, there you go, could give us an extra nut knife. Now we can fish. And I'm, I'm actually going to switch that out because the balaclava... Put that on our head for now. Looks absolutely ridiculous, but insulation. The balaclava allows you to eat, take medication, drink water without, without having to take the mask off. Now, where do I fish? This is the question. Zombie there. Dying to get their mitts on me. <laughs> we'll avoid them. We've picked up a cold. Don't be surprised if you pick up a cold five minutes into spawning, into any winter server. Even if you get your hands on really good clothing, early doors. Just embrace the fact you're probably going to get a cold. And you're going to need that cold medication because it's the Siberian mod to get rid of it. We're in Electro, so we're very close to a large hospital. So I'm not too panicked already about having a cold what was that smoke flare don't want a smoke bomb smoke grenade whatever you want to call it you could fish off the docks here you can build a fire pretty much anywhere on this server you could cook it up in there but even with a full belly the cold is eventually going to turn the flu the flu will eventually turn to pneumonia so in the back of my mind, I've got the ability to fish. That's not going to change. That's a pretty handy tool to have. A lack of a bag worries me, though. Even with a belly full of fish, the flu, the pneumonia will kill you. Even if you're full white apple, the pneumonia will kill you. So in the back of my mind, my first priority now is can I get to that hospital? And I find cold medication. So I can at least knock that on the head. Take care of one problem. Before I address the second problem. Which is going to be food. Water. Let's check this shed. Let's check this military container. And then work our way in. To the town. Into the city. Fantastic outfit for Michael. 10 out of 10 drip. I don't really want to be fighting tons of zombies. You've probably heard me say the phrase before, take the path of least resistance if you can. Because even if you're very proficient at fighting Zeds on this server, you can still walk out the other side, come out the other side with a concussion, with level 1 pain, or even worse, a deep wound which can only be fixed with a surgical sewing kit. So if you can avoid the early doors, do so. I know Electro very well, so I know the fire department is right in front of me. In that fire department, we can get exceptional clothing. The firefighter jacket, the firefighter pants, which not only give you very good insulation against the cold, but also give you a lot of slots. So if you don't pick up a backpack early doors, which we haven't, you can use your clothing, your jacket, your pants to carry a lot more items scanning ahead for the path of least resistance also looking for dead zombies players 
I'm looking for smoke coming out of chimneys to indicate players. There's a banana man, NBC. Zombie that side. Famous last words. It doesn't look too bad. So I'm creeping in. We may have to take care of this clown. Just some shorts. And they could be, and they quite often are, firefighter zombies, NBC zombies behind the fire station. Just going up the hill towards the hospital. So don't be too keen on sprinting around, making a lot of noise, dragging in those zombies. I'm going to drop them. I'm going to drop the, uh, the battery there so I can pocket the hammer. Because you can soon find yourself in a lot of problems. It might look clear. or oh, there's only one guy out the front. There you go. There's another one creeping. There could be another two around the back. All of a sudden, you're in a world of pain. So crouch walk where you can. And I always assume there are a lot more zombos waiting to ruin your day. Look at this. It's badly damaged, which is a shame. Because it's the best zombie slayer in the game since the last update and someone has been here okay so this this civilian clothing doesn't spawn in the fire department so i know someone has come in they've swapped that out for a jacket pants very clever why wouldn't you daisy loves to try and rob you of your stuff if you're lucky it'll just glitch nearby Quickly transfer our stuff into these much better condition pants. We'll go upstairs and have a look to see if we can get a matching jacket or a better condition axe. I doubt it though. I bet whoever was there left that civilian, those civilian items of clothing. Picked up anything better that we might want. But we might as well look. You'll never know. They might have been blasé. They might not have been thorough. Some people don't check out on this roof. Nothing there. Looks like people have done. So let's go and check out the canteen area of the fire department. Both doors are closed, which is always a bit of a worry. Someone camping in here. Sorting out their loot, ready to attack. But no, okay. When you think about it, we got out of here with the axe. And the worn pants, which are best insulation. I'd say that's a win. Directly behind the hospital. Uh, the hospital. The fire department is the hospital. It's probably the most natural way of somebody else progressing. The other player who dropped that clothing might have, might be taking the exact same route that we are. Now the blizzard will shield some of your footsteps, a bit like rain does in Daisy. So if you again, if you can crouch walk past the Zeds without engaging them, do so. But there we go. Granny. Granny heard us. Granny's given us a level one pain. But I can live with that. It's better than a concussion. Much better hat for insulation. The beanie. Switch it out. What's my ideal goal here? It's to find something I can eat quickly. Maybe some cereal. An unopened can which is not rotten but you got to get real lucky on Intens, and specifically in Winter Intens, to find that pristine bit of food. So now I'm going into the hospital, and my priority is cold flu medication. If I find anything else, bonus. But to be honest with you, if I only come out of here with cold medication, that would be a win. This zombie's going to aggro on me. Pretty sure. And because I didn't pick up the firefighter jacket, our carry capacity is pretty low. We could probably ditch the hammer. Now we found that other little steak knife. Just to make room for some pills we might find in here. Might have been picked clean though. 
Look at that, we've got some legitimate gloves which is, which have been dropped by the looks of it because they don't spawn in here. What's this? Oh, Daikin. I'm pretty sure that regenerates your blood if you were to lose a lot of blood. And I'm almost positive Hefferol does the same. So we found two packets of pills so far. Neither of them are the ones we want. Alarm clocks don't spawn in the hospital either. More signs of player activity. And we're slowly running out of options here. Oh, hang on. Nisa is, is for pain. Which is okay, because we've, we've got pain at the minute. So let's address that. Let's go and have a look upstairs. Close the door behind us. If someone's trailing us and they follow us into the hospital, they'll now give us an audio indicator. We hope, if we're paying attention. I'm scanning out the back of the hospital. I'm, I'm again looking for smoke coming from a fire. Someone who's just left, just, just gone up the road. And I'm going to carry this for a second, this small first aid kit. Now, it only takes up a little bit of room in your inventory. See? But you can carry a lot more meds in there. It's like Mary Poppins' bag. All smoke and mirrors. Take our rags and we're going to leave our battery. It's not a priority. We'll find another battery down the line if we need one. Should I have gone all the way up to the top? I probably should because I haven't found my cold medication. And on this server, medication can spawn in items of medical clothing. You never know. Not, not got lucky. All right. There's only a couple more options. One of the cars out the front spawns medicine. And if you kill a medical Z, they can also drop medicine. Other than that, we're in trouble. We could be in deep doo-doo. So, we actually instigate the aggro now on this medical zombie. Deal with it. Search. She's now a viable option. To maybe drop some tetracycline or ibuprofen or a flare. Jesus. Let's check the car. I think I saw a, a, a Z or two. There's a Colt magazine there for some reason. Again, they don't spawn here. No medications on the, the car, but there is another medical zombie there. This guy in red. Make sure you're not aggroing two or three at the same time. We can deal with him one on one. Not an issue. Down he goes. Is he going to be our lord and saviour? Is he hell? So we go over here. Medical stuff doesn't usually spawn on this car, so I'm not really... Uh, I haven't got much hope for that. Now there's some gloves there, though, if you needed them. So now you might start to panic. I mean, I'm panicking a little bit. We need ibuprofen. We need paracetamol. We need tetracycline. We need something that will handle a cold. We haven't had any food or drink yet. So you've got a couple of options. Here's the coin toss scenario that I love in Daisy. We can go towards Mogilevka. Just outside of Electro is a, is a summer camp. There is a medical center in that summer camp. It's a little bit of a trek. And we would probably be starving to death and dehydrating to death before we got there. If we then cured ourselves, we got lucky with the medication, we probably could then crawl, crawl to the little lake, which is nearby the summer camp, do some fishing, and we may get out of it alive. Another option is to have a look around town. We've seen evidence of players. Can we beg them? Can we do a deal to get some... Medical equipment, some pills, they might want to trade with us, or even if they don't want to, we could uh, persuade them, shall we say, to uh, let go of their loot. Oh, 
a look at this. We go into town instead. And we find Ibrufen in a car. Shit. And that will stop us dying of the cold. Now I want to take a quick look around this police crash convoy. Why wouldn't you? There's a pioneer for starters. We take it. Guys rumbled us. This prisoner zombie. Deal with him. Let's make sure we're not losing any potential 556 five, in the police car. Quick look in here. These little side apartments can spawn food. Didn't get lucky. I'm still aware there are players around. We've seen drop loot. We've seen switched out clothing. But thank God I looked in that car and find that ibrufen. It's problem number one of many. And if you've played in tens, you know what I mean. Problem number one dealt with. And if we'd have headed off to that summer camp, that Mogilevka summer camp, we might have got there, been starving and dehydrating to death and not found the medication that we needed anyway. There's nothing in this gun. Always check, but there's nothing in there. But it's not a bad little rifle to get. This one. Nothing also. So... I'm looking at everything now. I'm thinking, I'm in town. Do I want to go to the PD? Probably. That's an actual car. So it seems to have all its wheels. Oh no, that's been blown out the front bit of it. Could be a trap. It's got none of the internal parts. Our flu, our flu, our cold is gone. The ibrufen's done its job. So I'm taking a risk here. I'm spending longer in Electro than I'd want to. Because I've now got the ability to fish. And I've cured my cold. I've got meds to, to, to burn as well. I've got a few spare. So rule number one in DayZ should be don't spend too much time in the spawn town. Or you'll regret it. You'll be set upon by other freshies or geared people. Basically just anyone who wants your shit. But I'm getting greedy. Okay. I'm getting greedy. I'm seeing things in, in the distance there. Like that cooking pot that I want. I'm thinking we're right by the well. So we might as well get a genuine sip. Now that we've got a water vessel. Now... bit unfortunate with the time in there but we got him in the end let me just double check heferol is blood medication i'm pretty sure it is yeah if it was stomach pain meds then i could have taken them and eaten a bit of rotten food to tide me over but we haven't got any food poisoning medication at the moment so not worth risking further illness Let's pick up the, the cooking pot, fill it with water. We're not going to be able to drink a full cooking pot anyway. So we'll leave it at like birds full. Right, that zombie saw us. So I'm expecting that zombie to kick the door down. There you go. Rude. And while we've got gloves, we might as well check. Maybe the zombie's got food that's not rotten. A lighter matches. Or sweet FA. Okay, let's go back to what we were going to do. We're going to get a drink. Food is going to become a massive issue very soon. It's going to hit red apple. And that's going to make us walk as if we were red health. Even though we're full white health. So again, through my mind now talking you through my decision making process I've got two choices 
do I go to the police station, hope to get a gun? Or... That's another player. Another player just sneezed. We haven't got the flu. Another player is very close. Sounded like it came from that direction. Zombie over there is not aggroed. So I'm really on my guard now. They could have a gun. They could have gone to the PD already. It'll... There's no upstairs. There's no upstairs to that apartment. So they could be in here. Oh shit, you scared the life out of me, dude. Did you hear you sneezing? What's your name, bro? Oh you got the you got the bloody hands, man. You need the you need to fix them up, man. You got a mic? Use it then. He put up a brave battle. He did put up a brave battle. But he broke a major rule in Daisy. No mic. We know what it equals. It's no life. Then he took on a fist fight. Or rather he took on an axe fight with his fists. And he started throwing hands, panicking a bit. Whereas I was blocking, making sure I got my headshots in. He was already sick. We heard him sneezing. We don't know what health he was at. So we cut him up. It ruins our knife. We've got our other steak knife. We've now got bones. Which, okay, they're badly damaged, but they're bones. Got a sawn off shoddy if we want it as well. A lighter, thank you very much. A sewing kit, thank you very much. Bones, thank you very much. I think shotgun ammo is going to be more prevalent than 556, five, so I'm happy to swap his shotgun out. He runs back to his body. He'll find a pioneer. But we've hit red health. Okay? So we got to go. We've just committed murder in town. We're starving to death. But in terms of our overall health, I know we're slowly starving to death with one downward arrow on our overall health but we've got rid of our cold we've got rid of our pain if you remember that we had earlier and we've now only got a few hematomas and maybe a little bit of a guilty conscience not really I'm being a bit facetious about the guilty conscience thing because if you know Michael at all you know that he's got to do what he's got to do survive and like that fella was standing in a building sneezing giving away his position he then didn't talk when he was spoken to 
And we all know the rule. No mic. No life. And all we are really missing is a bag. Because this lack of carry capacity is, is really frustrating. Oops. As is a swing and a miss. But we're moving away. I've mentioned a few key rules of Daisy. Get out of town. Don't st don't stay around the spawn town too long. Don't overstay your welcome. No mic, no life. That's another well-known rule. That guy paid the price for not adhering to that one. And here's another little rule that I like to abide by. Get away from the scene of a crime very quickly. If that guy gets an electro spawn, there's a good chance he's going to come looking for revenge. Why wouldn't he? Very handy find. The firefighter axe, as you can see. Now, with us being red hunger and slowly... I mean, it would take us a, a little bit longer to start really dying prolifically of the cold. But, once it starts becoming a, a flashing red apple, that can soon go down. And it's not something you want to tempt fate with. So I'm going to fish pretty much immediately. Yes, it's still quite close to the scene of the crime. But it's not like we're hanging around two doors down. We're going to use this as our base of operations. Someone's had a fire here uh, relatively recently. And we're going to take our chances. We need to eat or we're going to die. So yes, it is a risk. Someone could creep up onto our fire. Do to us what we did to that other chap. But beggars can't be choosers. We've got a risk. Attempting to catch one fish at least. That's only all that I'm going for is one fish. We're not looking to have a full fry up here. A cookout. Where's the blood meds? We don't want the blood meds. Let's make our fishing rod. We're going to leave our axe in here with our bones. So it's taking a bit of a risk as well. Leaving loot here. But we're already chunked. Look, we're already chunked health now because of the food sitch. We can put our hook on the fishing rod. We can do a bit of that. Close the doors. Now in this server, in tens, you can stack wolves. Uh, wolves. <laughs> you can stack, you can certainly stack wolves. You can stack worms. Like you can stack pieces of paper. So when we get one, like that. We can then go for a second in case we get a false bite. You know how temperamental the fishing can be on Intense and Daisy in general. So I'm, I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to go with two worms. I also don't want to burn through my steak knife just by digging up worms. Because we're going to need to fillet this fish when we catch it. Big mistake there. Not... Because I didn't bring the axe with me, I've now got to use the steak knife on the zombie. Shame. And we're now flashing apples, so we're on the clock massively. Okay, let's make our bait. Get it on. Hook on. Can we get fish on? Not the greatest cover, these reeds, but if you can find any sort of cover for fishing, you'll be surprised how many times people will just take a maybe a slight glance and run past you without seeing you. But leaving that dead zombie there is a bit of a giveaway, let's be honest. And this is the great unknown of Daisy now. Toss of a coin. We need to catch a quick fish if we're going to keep this character going and go on a nice adventure. Maybe up the coast to Cami, Scalisti. Maybe down west to Cherno, Belota, the prison. And all of that in town would have been for nothing. Even the murder of that poor chap. We didn't even get his name. We didn't want to put him on uh, the video. 
maybe embarrass him without his permission. So there we go. The dummy, the ghost bite, which is why we got two worms minimum. Because we almost expected to fail. Daisy loves to rub salt in the wounds when you're already dying. Of starvation. You've got to wait for the tide to come back in. Which is, like, brutally annoying. Before it will allow you to cast off again. So are we going to make it two for two? Or are we going to have to go and get another worm or two? We're on the clock. We're going to hit yellow health soon. We haven't even started our fire. We haven't cut our fish. We haven't broken down our fishing rod to use the wood for fuel. Daisy not playing ball so far. Look how long it's taken. Even with a genuine fishing hook, a worm on, it's just laughing at me. And this is what you've got to accept when you play DayZ and when you play in tens. Every decision I feel I've made so far, you could argue has been a good one. We've had some lucky finds with the loot. We decided to attack that man. We won. Got some loot from him. A lighter sewing kit, nice. Some bones for future fishing. Future knives. But if Daisy doesn't want to play ball and give you a fish, it doesn't matter what decisions you make or where you made them. This might be the end of your run right here. And like I said in the last playthrough video, I'm not one of these who's going to edit videos and playthroughs and guides and only put up the good stuff. We're putting up the warts and all. And if it ends up me not catching a fish and dying, despite making pretty much 100% the right decisions, or let's say 90% the correct decisions so far in this life, Maybe you won't feel so bad if you're new to Daisy or you're new to Intense in particular and you're struggling to get a start because I've played this server for hundreds of hours now and I've got one foot in the grave at the moment. If Mike doesn't pull his fing finger out and catch a fish, there you go. Put the hook back in your pocket. Um, put, the f put that back on your back. Mackerel in your hand. Go back to our temporary base of operations. Again, this could all fall flat on its face at any time. If Mr. Freshy comes back, sees a fire, puts two and two together, notices my clothing, and comes back for his ultimate revenge. Or a brand new Freshy who just wants to throw the dice. I wouldn't blame him. We've got two doors between us and our fire. If somebody cracks open said door... Doors. We may get three seconds notice maximum to defend ourselves. Order we're going to do. Preparation. Break down quickly. Our fishing rod. We're going to use the wood for fuel. There it is. Break down the long stick into three sticks. Slam that in the fire along with a rag which I'm hoping is dry enough to be used as kindling. Still, it is. Use our lighter that we procured from our friend to light our fire. We've caught another cold because we're hungry. Our vital statistics are not high enough. So we're more prone to illness. We haven't got that high a survival level, even though we chose, I think, eight points to put into survival. So it's not guaranteed to light the fire first time. We've got it now, though. We're going to take an ibuprofen to start battling this cold. We're going to take our fish. And we're going to fillet it right in front of the fire. We're going to put one on to bake and we're going to put one on to dry. Our knife has survived. Oh, our knife, we didn't go through the animation. That's me being overly keen to feed Michael. Our knife is probably going to ruin. One on to dry, one on to bake. I'll tell you why in a minute. 
pick up our axe. We can defend ourselves now, in theory. If somebody rushes our fire. Put the belt around our waist again. Saves on inventory space. Now this will lose some of its 46% because we're baking it. This will retain its 44% because we're drying it. So we're going to at least get one pretty decent sized fish. We're going to carry the bones in our hands when we leave. Shit. Put feline vision on. But we're able to dig stashes. Whoopie do. And the reason why I put five points into my butchering is so that we would get decent sized fillets like this one and as we start eating that flashing apple will become solid red apple with three red chevrons there it goes while our other fillet is drying out it takes a little bit longer to dry out your food but you do retain more of the food as a percentage and look our health is going back up now I'm going to take the axe into my hand at this point, and I'm ready to roll. If someone kicks my door open, they get in one right in the face. Let me just double check he didn't have this loaded. No. I hope he didn't saw that off himself. I hope he found it like that, I can't really see the point of sawing off shotguns. I mean, I suppose you can pocket them and conceal them. I've done that before. We shouldn't be too much longer. We've got the heat buff. We've killed our second cold of the life. We're only, what, 40 odd minutes in? We just need this to turn, which it has. We pocket it. You see it says dried, 44% remain remaining, and we leave. And what I'm going to do is close the door behind me. So if anyone is creeping up on our fire, they may think we're still in there until it's too late for them to realize we're long gone. And we leave immediately we already spent far too long in electro after murdering someone but it was essential it had to be done we're gonna have to deal with granny as well she's in our way there's no check in the line uh, the path of least resistance here we've just got to deal with her luckily we've got the firefighter axe so we can welcome her onto the head of the axe for a one tap Just make sure there's not a juicy little... Oh, there we go. Took the words right out of my mouth. As Meatloaf would have said. Now it's frozen. It's minus five. But we're going we're gonna to pocket it in a second. After we deal with this zombie. And I'll give you another little tip for winter servers. Particularly this one. Don't quote me that it applies to all winter servers, but certainly applies to this one. We're going to get ready to eat that. We're going to put that in its place, in our pea coat. Now, the item is frozen, but if you put it inside your clothing, it, it will defrost over time. Now, how quick it defrosts is dependent on what the insulation is of the item of clothing you've put it in. So the pea coat is high insulation. My firefighter pants, I believe, are still at best insulation. So as we navigate these rocks and eat our second bit of fish, I'll just get into this bush over here and show you what I mean exactly. Because the can of soda was only minus five, it won't take that long to defrost. But we want it to be as quick as possible. So look, firefighter pants best, pea coat high insulation. So I want it in the firefighter pants and it will defrost quickest in those pants. So that will give us even more calories and it will give us hydration that we need for our journey. Let's just say I've decided to venture up the coast in a northeasterly fashion. And the next town, if you know Janaris well, would be Kamishovo, opposite Skalisti Island. If you know me well, you know I love going over to Skalisti. So now I've got a soda which will get me to Kami easily. 
And we've still got a ma major mistake. If anyone noticed the mistake, I left the bones behind, but I'm not going back for them. Okay? So that was a mistake. Don't do that, folks. But we've still got this damaged legitimate fishing hook. So in a way, we can get away with that mistake. But we've got a badly damaged axe. Before we fish again, we're going to have to find at least a kitchen knife, a steak knife, maybe some stones on the track, something to dig up worms and fillet the fish once we've successfully fished. If I was going up to Kamishovo, I would probably fish on the little island that is opposite. Little peninsula. It's got a, a boathouse. It's got some lo a log cabin, a single log cabin. If you know Chinaris, you'll know it well. Or you could just go over to the lighthouse and do a spot of fishing. Nicely away from the scene of our crime. But on the way, why not check these boats? They might have a little something something for you. We might have some shades. No thanks. I'm actually going to pick up the jumpsuit pants. You're thinking, why? I'm going to drop them. A radiator and pants. Oh, I thought that was a bag. Jerry can. What's got the biggest... Pants are six slots. I think these are nine. Another little tip. If you've been a bit unlucky, like I have, in terms of finding a bag, school bag, dry bag, hiking bag, any type of bag, you can make yourself your own little temporary handbag. Ooh, suits you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Cod. You're welcome. Now, it's a bit of a pain. If I've got to fight a zombie now, I've got to stop, drop the pants, pull out the axe... But once you get quite practiced at doing it, just gives you those 12, sorry, extra slots. So if I go over here now, we'll use this as an example, and we'll finish up the video probably over here, because you get the gist now of what I've done in my first hour-ish, nearly an hour of spawning in, in winter, Electra. We'll loot these buildings. We'll see if we can find anything as an example. Typically not. But if we found a sewing kit, we found another soda, we found a flare, we found a couple more hooks on the boats. Instead of ditching medicine, sewing kits, you know, essential items, we can put them in the pants and carry them with us until we find a legitimate bag. So as you see, we're still in the yellow for food with the arrow going down. So fishing soon is going to be on the agenda again. But that soda will give us some more calories. Keep the arrows going in the right direction. Someone's locked themselves in there at one time or another. And there's a truck battery there. So someone has been around very, very recently. Probably looking for car parts or stuff for their base. Although this server is wiping soon, so I don't know why they would be doing that. It's wiping very soon. But now, my thought process would be, we've done okay. If you look at our stats. Alright, we had to murder a man. We've got a gun, we've got an axe, we've got cold meds, pain meds, sewing kit, bandage. We could take that if we wanted to carry other stuff, for example. We've got something to drink out of. We've even got the bottle inside it. More rags, two flares to start a fire, bit on a lighter 25%. We can chamber an IJ or a scorpion if we find one. Critically, rope belt and fishing hook to fish, and some 22. Desperately need a knife before we fish again. But I hope, if you're an Intends player and you enjoy these playthroughs, you've got something out of that by me discussing my thought processes in that first 50 minutes. We had a couple of occasions where, do we go through the left-hand door? Do we go through the right-hand door? Do we turn left? Do we turn right? What do we do? And luckily, those decisions paid off. We heard the guy sneezing. We knew we didn't have a cold. So I sort of whittled down where he might be. We found him. We tried to talk. We made the decision to strike. It paid off. We won the fight. We got some nice loot from him. Nothing crazy. Let's just assume I'd brought the bones with me. That would have been good. Duh. Then we would have had five more bones to make bone knives, potentially some more bone hooks. And I would probably now, if I was carrying this run on, 
go over to that lighthouse. It, you did see it in the distance somewhere. There it is. But on the way, there are some more fishing boats that could yield more hooks. And if I'd have brought the bones with me, I could have made myself, either with the axe or from another way, I could have made myself a couple of bone knives and we'd fish Robert's your father's brother. But if you'd like to see more of these walkthroughs, sort of how I get started series with some different locations, give me some, give me some ideas if you want. Actually name in the comments where you would like to see me spawn and I'll F11 until I get that spawn. If you want to see more winter or if you just want to see your standard summer spawns or if you want me to do a, a playthrough of a specific server, what I would do in the first hour, let me know in the comments below. C consider subscribing because we're on our way to a thousand subs. Love you all for helping me get that far. Don't forget to like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Caught out. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.